You want to do that little thing you were doing a minute ago? Hello, <laughs> this is the librarian. <laughs> Can you be Hello. quiet? <laughs> All right. All seriousness. All seriousness, right. All right. I'm serious. You're opening. Oh, I'm opening. Hey, welcome to the Always Right podcast. <laughs> I'm co host Jamie Vendera, and this is. Author Carissa Lele. All right. So we're going to leave all that on there, though, right? Yes. Perfect. Absolutely. Because, Sweet. you know, vegan podcast. Yeah. <laughs> except for uh, we eat. We, we eat. Except for the meaty parts. Yeah. I mean, except for the meat because we eat meat. Yep. <laughs> Told me a vegetarian, but not I could. A vegan. I could be a vegetarian if it tastes <laughs> like chicken. Um, so today we're talking, you know, we've been at this for a while and we've met a lot of people who. I've talked about writing books. And, mm -hmm. Oh, I've been writing my books since high school and I'm 47 now. And I just, you know, I don't believe in myself. So a lot of people, they, they want to be a writer, but they say, I'm not a writer. They, they mm -hmm. feel it inside. And that's not true. I don't think I've never met anyone who didn't have a story mm -hmm. that they couldn't share. And I've had, I was just telling Carissa before we hopped on here, I've uh, inspired so many people that kind of wanted to write a book, but they were in fear. And as soon as we got off the phone, they're telling me right before we got off the phone, wow, I am so inspired. I know I can be an author now. You know, I know mm -hmm. I can be a writer. So we want to kind of talk about that today. Sorry, I have a light that's being weird. It's a ghost. It's something. Okay. All right, now it's not shining in my eye. Like this one's shining it's in my eye. It's big glasses. It's a zzz, you know how you like All up. the better to see you with. <laughs> I feel for you then. Like you hold up a magnifying glass, it's just going to burn your cornea. Uh, well, hold on. Are these better? I think they look fine. Those, so these are like. As long that's up to you. It depends on if the no, glare gets you. These are my newer prescription ones. So. I can't. I can't do prescription because I go through right. like a dozens of these a year. I'm breaking them. I'm losing them. You know, my prescription hasn't changed since like literally third grade until last year i never had eyesight troubles i probably shouldn't say this because we're talking about i'm not a writer we want to convince you to be a writer this might convince you not to be a writer but my eyesight started getting bad when i became a writer <laughs> yeah, so. were you like looking closer at the page and stuff or uh, you know i was always writing on a laptop and it started when about 15 years ago i'm you know, I've been writing much longer than that, but and when I got into fiction, stay away from fiction, I'm teasing you. I was just writing for hours every day, and I'm right up on my laptop. Oh, uh, so, so you were too close to the screen. Yes, and now I even write books on my iPhone. Yeah, so that's sure probably that's... your problem. Don't yep. do that. Don't do that. So let me lean back okay. so I can see it. Okay. So this episode is called, I Am Not a Writer Yet. Yet. Yes, yes, because here's the thing. You can be a writer with practice. You could say, like, for example, I told my daughters that when I first wrote my first book, I had never aspired to be a writer, but the book was in my head visually and I needed to get it out on paper. And so my very first book, Crystal Gate, when Rich gave me feedback, he, and I didn't look at it like, oh my gosh, he tells me I, I suck. No, he said, these are the things we need to work on. And so I took that as constructive criticism and I worked on it. And when I wrote Four Rivers, he's like, I can see that you listened. And so now here's what I need you to work on. Well, at least and I know he's, he told you that too. Well, he's nicer to you because, um, you know, way back when we started Seven Lamb Press, we used all these pen names. I, I didn't feel like I could write horror and YA. So for like Siren and uh, Feral, I had this teenage girl named Jamie Lynn Saunders. Mm -hmm. And I remember writing you it. He's like, that. man, you can tell she's not, he's she's immature. really not a good writer yet. She has a lot of work. I said, well, Rich, what do you, what do you want me to pass on to her? Well, she needs to do this, 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 and this. And then we wrote a second book. He's like, wow, that, that young lady's really improving in this YA fantasy. She's really listened to me. So all those years later, and we, I mentioned this before, when I said, hey, I'm, I'm all of these authors. And he's like, what? He's like, there's no way. I'm like, yes, I just get into the mindset. I'm thinking, how would a teenager write a YA series? How would a, an 80 year old man write a fantasy series? And, you know, how would a woman approach a, a horror uh, novel? And um, so you learn, you get better. I was, I, I don't even consider myself a great writer now. I, I have a great creative mind, but we have a wonderful team with Rich. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. for editing and, and you to, uh, to, you know, to read my stuff, to make sure everything's on point. But the point is, is practice, practice, practice. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah. You know, and learn from your mistakes, absolutely. which something I, I learned that Stanford, one of there's a, there's a lady who did research about the mind. Um, and a lot of times they will teach this now in a college setting that don't look at it like you cannot learn physics. Don't look at it like you can't learn mathematics. Don't look at it like you can't learn to do something because they have found that if someone makes a mistake, <clears throat> takes their mistake and learns from their mistake and keeps using that, that, um, that mistake is like <clears throat> a building block. Your brain actually will start to learn how to correct itself. It's almost like a muscle memory. Your brain will literally build the, the building blocks on how to do something. So with that said, when you do the opposite and you give up, your brain's like, oh, we're giving up. So it's not even going to try to course correct and learn how to do something. So same thing with writing. You are not a writer yet. So take that yet and learn where you made mistakes. Write something out. Have someone read it. Give you honest feedback. That's the hard part is hearing your honest feedback and knowing that maybe you have to do something change wise. You have to be humble enough to change what you did and correct it. Yeah, you can't be married to your wording. Uh, I mean, I was. Well, we've the said that. Yeah, don't be married to what you <clears throat> what you wrote down. Yeah, you know. And God love Rich uh, Douglas, but man, I wanted to kill him the first time he edited mm -hmm. one of my books. I'm mm -hmm. sure you might have felt the same way. <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't want to take him out. I I, oh, did, I did. want <laughs> I don't want to take him out. I did want to fire him in a moment, but. <laughs> No, and it was, and, and that's the thing. I knew that I wasn't a writer, so you have to come to reality that you are not a bestseller with your first draft. Your first book may be a bestseller, but your first draft is not. If you're, it's. I mean, that would be. I'd, I'd have to look that up to see if anybody ever had their first draft become a a bestseller because there have to be edits, there has to be changes. No one comes out of the womb knowing how to write efficiently. Yeah, and you're too into the story, and it may it may be grammatical errors, it may be plot errors that you missed just because you're so into the story, mm -hmm. you figured people would understand, you know, mm -hmm. why you left this out. So you definitely need uh, an editor for sure. But yeah. you know, it begins with writing regularly. You know, writing find a space. You you don't find the time to write. You make the time to write. I'm yeah. the perfect candidate for this because we've been talking about it and I haven't been making the time for writing like I should. No, you have not. <laughs> but in, so um, a, a while back, I posted on, on social media about one of our episodes. I think it was the sci-fi one. And I was like, uh, author Carissa DeLay it, it seems frustrated with Jamie Vendera. Yep. People laughed at it. <laughs> Scott laughed at it. He's like, I'm used to that face. <laughs> And I know what it was because I was looking at you like, okay, you're gonna add, you're gonna add to this series, which you haven't fi finished. Ages of I haven't just started. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. But I know you have a lot going on. I know you have a lot going on. So, yeah, that's fine. But you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna start working towards even. Oh, I have no choice. You done you done promote and it says Age of the Social Four is coming soon. So mm -hmm. I'm like, yes. And you know, it's not that I I don't want, don't to. want to. It's life happens and dealing mm -hmm. with teaching and everything. But um, my true love, we discussed this not too long ago, is writing. I love to use mm -hmm. the voice, but writing because you can get lost in that world. You're, you're making, you're building your own world. Mm -hmm. Which that brings me to the point on this episode is find your reason. Why are you writing? You know, do you write because you love it? Or are you trying to be a bestseller and get all the promo and the money? What is your, what is your drive for writing? That's going to change your mentality when you're writing. Are you writing for the financial gain that may come or may not come? Or do you actually enjoy writing? So find your reason. And you need to find your reason and, <laughs> and, and change your routine to make sure it happens. Yeah, you have to set achievable goals when mm -hmm. you do that. So, and I, I, I mean, I'm like teach, telling you about this and here I'm my own worst enemy. But mm -hmm. look how many books I've written. And I always had achievable goals. And mine was generally flesh through a chapter uh, every morning. And that's how I've knocked out books so quickly. You know, I right. just plot it out. Yours may be write a page a day. It could be before you go to bed. It could be in mm -hmm. the morning, late at night, early. It, it doesn't matter. Whatever works for you, but make it a part of your life. Mm -hmm. So that you know that you may not be a writer now or yet, but you mm -hmm. can be, but you have to write word after word after word. You've got to be inspired. You got to stay in that story. 
there's something that just literally came to me in this thought process as we talk about writing and we talk about being married to your words. We talk about your first book being your baby. We talk about all these relationship things. Writing is kind of a relationship. And so when you start out as an author and you are writing and you are putting all your effort into it and you're taking it on dates and spending so much time with it, and then you become married to these books that you've done, over time, do you fail in this relationship with writing? This is literally a relationship. And it's almost like you you need to kind of talk yourself into like putting energy back into your relationship with your writing. Don't worry, I haven't got a divorce with my relationship with writing. <laughs> <laughs> you just need to find the fire again. You need it's almost like I'm thinking of this like almost like into a relationship that you put so much in the beginning of dating. You put so much in the beginning of a relationship to develop it and get to know it and understand it and all these things. And then over time you're like, hey, I've done it. We're we're here together. It's just I'm just not spending as much time with it. And you know, like, I'm not worried. I know the books will come out that I need to finish, but you're right. As soon as, same goes for all of you listening. If you keep putting it off and you don't write and you're like, I don't have time. I'm so busy. Uh, if you just start, even if you say, I'm going to write five minutes a day, try for a paragraph or some bullet points, you will fall in love with this relationship again. And then you want to be with this relationship all the time. And then the story starts unfolding, which when that happens, man, you better have your phone on you because you'll be driving in the car and you're like, oh, I just come up with a, a couple ideas. So you can either audio record or you could do text to speech. Um, don't do text to speech if you're me, but anyone <laughs> else can use that. And then that way you can, you can understand what you've written. But the ideas are going to start popping in your head. It could be when you're asleep at 3 a.m. in the morning. And if an idea comes to you, please wake up and either make a quick audio recording or text to speech, whatever you have to do, because I promise you nine times out of 10, you will not remember that in the morning. All right. I'm marking this down. March 18th. <laughs> I, I hate you right That's now. That's the day that we recorded this. Yes. And so when is, is Jamie getting started? It is 921. Jamie is getting time. started before the end of April after he finishes all his big stuff. He's <laughs> got to do with, Dr. Vox and taxes and goofy things and uh, <laughs> trying to keep my buddy Jake from trying to you know, plan a trip to Cayman Islands again. Just let uh, me focus. Let me get, let me get focused. Yes. He's already said, man, we need to get you back down here. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I know. I, I, I'm marking this down. All right. March 18th, 9, 21 AM central time. Jamie advises to ride daily and fall in love with your riding. Again. All right. You know what? I said this. 14 um, um, podcasts ago, but I will start oh, and the, the resolution. No, not doing yet. Yeah. Oh, it's been that long ago. Hasn't it? I will finish reading the first three ages of the schedule. I've already finished number one, put all my notes in. Uh, so I just need to move on to number two and knock it out. Mm -hmm. And then number three, it's a lot of words. You know, this, is a very, this is a very morbid statement and I hesitate to say it. <laughs> you don't believe me. <laughs> No, 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 no. It's not that I don't believe you, but I feel like the universe is taking out your animals to say, I'm freeing up your time. It could be. Don't get it any more animals. Because I know you as watch many times your heart, you've had have. to put down so many animals lately. We, we are such caregivers, yes. that, but we don't get to do it. That's what she says. She said, we don't even enjoy life. I'm like, like if I fly somewhere, it's just for work and it's not for total joy. And I'm like, oh, I love these babies, but I'm like, yes, my hands are tied. Like I said, I got to go here in a minute. Take another cat to the vet. Yeah, I got to take another cat to the vet. You're, I mean, your animal, bless your heart. Almost I mean, every podcast we film. Yeah. There's something going on with your animals. And I feel like the universe is saying, hey, don't well, I have universe more. Have these with good homes. Like we won't take them to the animal shelter. I can't. I does just don't trust anyone. Oh no, anyone. no, 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 no! no you know, if I knew they were loving people for the cats that roam this area, and please, universe, quit letting people drop off their cats right here. Yeah, that's they, not going to happen. Yep. All right. But, Squirrels ran by. Yeah. Back to the topic. Create a writing space. Yes. I never did. I'm not. I don't really need a writing space. But some people like to have a desk and motivational quotes or pictures up around them so that they can write every day. I can write in a car. I can write on my couch in a chair in bed. I can write on my iPhone, iPad, computer, whatever works for you. Again, I'm just not personally a, a person that needs a writing space. Do you have one? 
Uh, so in when I first did Crystal Gate, my writing space was on my bed after breastfeeding a baby, and then I would just type it out on my iPad. Um, but that was in that moment. Now my children are in their teenage years and um, older. And so for me, I have my space here. I have an L-shaped desk. I have all my gaming stuff right here. This is like my, this is my space. This is my creative space per se with words and, and playing. And it's just kind of like where my energy is. It's weird because it's in my bedroom, but this is like a corner. It's my little nook. Um, I've tried to change that space and try to write in bed. It just doesn't feel, I feel like I, I, it's a desk. I feel like I'm actually at a desk writing. So yeah, my space is here. Um, I've tried, uh, I, I literally loaded the Grammarly and onto my iPad. So whenever I go to volleyball tournaments and stuff, and I'm sitting there waiting between matches, I could literally just write. And I haven't got to do that yet, but I'm excited to maybe start doing that um, and be able to write when I have downtime. But I also get distracted because I love the moms on our team that I can just sit there and chill out with. Um, so it's not always conducive to be able to write in that time frame. Understood. But, but if you do, at least you've got, you could say, hey, I got three more sentences. So, mm -hmm. and that's a lot more than some of you can say right now. But be proud yeah. of those three sentences. So if you just have that in your mind, you're always a writer. You're mm -hmm. an author. Everybody even has if a story. You're not published. So this is something like, and I know you and I've talked about this. Everybody has a story. Um, and I know that people have said to you, and you can share that in a minute, uh, things about writing books. But something I know that when people find out I'm a writer and we start talking, people are like, oh, yeah, I've always wanted to write a book. I'm like, well, what would you write about? And then they'll tell me, I'm like, so why don't you write it? And I'm like, hey, here, if you hear someone's story, say you should write a book. And if you're not sure how to start, here's this podcast. And I recently, so I switched my major to interdisciplinary studies and a focus in uh, religious studies and anthropology. And I tell you what, I love this new class. Uh, we had to create a video of ourselves, and then we had like every other student had to. And there are some awesome students. And of course, I put in there that I'm an author and, you know, things like that. We have a podcast. But there are so many people that were like, oh, my gosh, I've always wanted to write a book. And I'm like, here's our podcast. Go on there. Let us help you. Because um, sometimes it's overwhelming. Where do I start? You start with writing your words down. That's what you do. You start with writing your word. Tell your stories. If you're telling someone your story, then fine tune it. Don't try to write it as if it's perfect the first go round. And I think that's what can be overwhelming. What about you? Do you think that can be overwhelming when people think they have to get it out perfectly? Yeah, but you know what? That's what happened with me with Raise Your Voice. I was over-examining every paragraph. I was worried about the cover, about editing. <clears throat> people, the best thing I can tell you is let it go. L word vomit. Just write it. Don't worry about sentence structure. Mm -hmm. Don't worry if it's not connected. Just get every word in your mind out into your document on paper, whatever you're doing. Uh, and then you can go back and edit it later. But if mm -hmm. you if you get in the middle of that creative flow, it, you're not. You know, you're like, oh my gosh, I've been working at this for three months. I've only got 14 pages. Mm -hmm. That's because you're over examining the structure and trying to make everything perfect. Yes. That's not the goal. I literally read my books at least three times before I pass on to Rich. Yeah. And, and when you read them, do you feel like sometimes? So do when you read them, do you feel like you add and take away a lot? Like when you're reading your stuff, do you feel like, oh, I probably should add this here. Oh, man, this doesn't make sense. I should probably take that out. I, yeah, exactly. Because in my mind, I, I remember the story. It's fresh. And I'm like, oh. or I'll be like, oh, I forgot. I, re I got another idea. I can add this uh, as a premonition <laughs> so they don't really uh, go. And they can go back and be like, oh, my gosh, that was planted the seed in chapter two. Mm -hmm. and I should have known that. I should have figured this out. So, right. yes, a lot of it is restructuring and making sure everything flows and I haven't missed anything. Uh, a lot for me is the spelling, making sure if I got a weird uh, name for a fantasy character that I, I spell it the exact same way. You know, so yeah. there's there's a lot of, uh, you know, benefits to reading your book at least three times before you pass it on to your editor. Yeah. And that's something that... Um... So we've touched a little bit, like you need to set those goals. Like I need to, I need to get this out while it's fresh, because I'm going to tell you right now, it'll be five o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm like, Oh, this would be a great addition to my story. And I can, I can hear it. I can, the words, whether I'm writing the fiction port part, or I'm getting ready to write a, a paper for college. I'm like, how I'm starting it and stuff. I'm like, Oh yeah, that's great. I'll totally remember that. No, write it in the moment. 
even if it's right on a piece of paper, like, oh, this is a great part. Set up your story and your goals for writing that if I'm going to write this down, I got to do this tonight or right now. I, I've got to get this down. So you have to you have to create your uh, your words or not not create your words. You need to set up a space on your phone or set up a space on your laptop or in a position where if something comes to you, you can make that promise to yourself. You're going to get those words down. Does that make sense? I don't know. Yep, absolutely. And because okay. if you don't, you're going to forget them. So yeah, I said like waking up in the middle of the night, and writing it down, but don't. And I, when I say this, when you write it, so say you're writing gibberish, you have a sentence and you're like, okay, I'm going to write myself some really quick cliff notes. Like I would in the beginning would t call Dylan before I had like a recording device. I would say, just write this down, right? Um, random things like lawyer, um, alleyway frozen. And those would be cl little clues when I come back to writing that night that I would remember. It's like, I have no idea what this means, but I'm like, just write this down for me because I don't have time to record this. I don't have a way to record this, but when I come back to it, it's fresh. But the problem is if I would wait like five days, I'm not going to remember what those cliff notes were. Oh, if I wait five minutes, I don't remember. <laughs> so I, I posted something on uh, Facebook today about that. Like, and it was like, uh, the person was like, Hey, it, the pl person played the memories and then the actual person and they're coming to their memories or, and the memories. Like, oh, so did you want to know the dances to all the songs from the nineties? Oh, wait, you want the lyrics from the nineties. Oh, you wanted the, the, the phone number of Bobby. Right. And like all these randomness things of <laughs> things you would never think you would remember. Oh, your locker code from middle school. Yeah. I got oh. that one. And it's like, no, I want the password I created two minutes ago. And I'm like, oh, I don't have that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's basically how it goes. That's so true. I have. Like even we film on Riverside and I don't know what's up with this app. I logged on twice today and made me log on twice. I'm like, really? why am I not staying logged in? And I had to go into my passwords because, oh, that's it. And I put it in. All right. And then I, we clicked off because we're checking the volume and I log back in. It's like, no, nope, get log in. I was like, what was the password I put in like two minutes ago? So, <laughs> yeah. So mine saves mine to my. It, uh, mine usually does too. I don't know what is going on. So. <laughs> All right. A uh, couple so other you, things. Um, you yeah, may want to join a writing community. Uh, oh, yes. You know what? Yeah, you, you, this is research. There are so many communities. And mm -hmm. if you go to Amazon, even books like on uh better grammar uh we've posted some books that i use before i've uh bought some books on how to write better science fiction so uh, you know do some research join uh facebook communities that cater to whatever a, you're writing find there books is a facebook, and study. yeah there's a facebook community that i joined uh and as nice as the and i and you can join it as a personal page and you can join it as your 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 author page if you have one set up but it's aspiring authors and it literally has people on there like, hey, there's my book cover. What do you guys think? And people give honest feedback. I mean, there are going to be people on there that give you like, um, oh, it's great. Bless you. And then there'll be the trolls. Mine is so much better than yours. Well, but then you get people that are actually honest and give good feedback that are like, hey. The... Sorry. I'm allergic to you. Yep. <laughs> We cut out no. all the other sneezes from all the other podcasts. Yeah. Um, no. So th there are people on there that will literally give you feedback on the image. Like, hey, your words are really tiny for this dark cover. Or if you're using this image, just so you know, this book here also has this image. People give, there's a lot of followers in that. So you'll get a lot of feedback from people. Even um, people that say, hey, here's here's my first chapter. Can you Can you give me some feedback on it? And not everybody's going to give you fit. There are people on there that are willing to give you an honest feedback on stuff. Is that goat's um, milk? Ew, no. No, it, it was cold brew, cashew milk, caramel, salted I don't get how they, how they do the little cashews. It don't make any sense to me. <laughs> no, it's like, no, that's not how it works. Oh, I thought that like milk this Milking cashew. Milking cashews, no. This is not meet the fuckers. <laughs> See, I, I, do own, I do own a cat farm. I never oh. thought about that. See, there you go. You can milk cats yeah. for your. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, that's cute. All right, that's a good movie. But anyway, sweet. Okay. All right, so that's basically the 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 push is you have a story, get it out there. You want to tell your life story, and here's the thing: when you're telling your life story, it 
don't look at it like everybody is going to read your story. You you kind of have to figure out what you're trying to tell. Are you just trying to spread the gossip of your life or are you actually trying to create your story? So um, I think that uh, a lot of times those kind of books get lost because not everybody wants to read a book about your life. So you have to kind of find what the focus is. Yeah, I mean, if you can find a focus that would help relate to other people. Yeah, it's still your story. But like, but people are like, just... oh my God, I experienced the same thing. I went through a horrible divorce. I, you know, I, mm -hmm. I overcome, you know, having this disease, something that would make, would speak to others. Well, and yeah, and even telling like, um, a lot of people go through trauma. So sometimes it's nice to read that there are other people going through those things, but even when you're deciding a title, find the, the point. Um, like if you're a cheer mom, I'm not a cheer mom, but like, if you're a cheer mom, you're like, Oh, the drama of cheer moms. Like you could almost like have like uh, a whole book of like the things you went through as a cheer mom or, um, being a stylist. Some of the secrets that we I've told been told in the salon, you know, would be interesting. People would probably love to read that. Like, Oh, you were told this. Then they want to figure out who said it. <laughs> <laughs> secrets of the stylist. Yes. That would be yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> Tattoo so. tales. Yeah. Uninked. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So, alrighty. So this was a pretty quick episode only because this is kind of basic. You got a story, start writing it down. Believe in yourself. Tell yourself, you know, you know, I'm not, if you don't think you're a writer, say I'm not a writer yet. Yeah. I'm but not a writer yet, be. but I got to but you got to start somewhere. Absolutely. Find <laughs> your reason and just do it. And, and, and listen to our episodes, you know, listen to the ways that we kind of like went through the, the process or send us an email, which goes to send us an email at yes. what? Oh, uh, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> Always write podcast.com. If you go there, we have all that's, our little that's our website. Yes, but I can't, I just forgot our, that's the squirrel passed by and I forgot our Always freaking write podcast at gmail.com. Bam. Boo. I told you I remember it. Mm -hmm. So there it is. <laughs> yes. But if you go to our website, always podcast.com, you can click those little icons. You can share them. Well, that's what I like because you can listen to us on Apple music, Spotify, watch us on YouTube, mm -hmm. see the faces that Chris makes at me when I'm mm -hmm. off in another adventure in my mind. When you're like, I'm going to add something to this series. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> not till you finish the others. I don't think so. I yeah. had nothing so. Yeah, a few weeks. I was like, I got an idea for a new book. I dreamed the name of the book. You're like, that's cool. Shelf it. So, yeah, put a pin in it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We do want you to put your stories out there. We do want you to write. We do want you to, to, to work towards becoming that author. But just keep in mind that the more you start writing, the better you're going to get at it. That doesn't guarantee you're going to be a bestseller, but if you're writing to be a bestseller, maybe you need to reassess why you're writing, right? Because you love it, right? Because you want to learn to be a better writer, right? Because you want to share your story, whatever the reason is, get it out there and just start writing. Yeah. If you do it from passion, that's where it's going to come. I've seen this in the music industry too. I want to be TikTok famous. I want to be famous. I want to be famous you better have the passion for mm -hmm. writing, for singing, for painting, whatever your creative outlet is, the passion comes first. You must really ask yourself, why do I want this? Is it to express myself or is it to be TikTok famous? Uh, well, nothing you know, wrong with that, but you know what? If you, if you come from it, from a point of passion and believing that's where you will shine as an author. Something that I'm listening or not listening to, I've been reading this past week. I thought I had it here. I printed it off but maybe it's somewhere else, but something that the Harvard review put out was about not, it's kind of like when you like, I want to be like them. A lot of times people will do a lot of the superficial um, reenactments. So what they'll do is they will literally do the same thing. But the problem is you need to learn how they're doing it, not what they're doing. So don't, don't completely um, copy paste. You need to literally learn how they do it, not what they're doing. So don't like try to copy paste yourself and what they look like. Find out how they're thinking, not what they're thinking, how they're thinking. 
So yeah, that's why you need to research and study. That's why the writing groups, the, uh, studying the books, mm -hmm. would be best for you, so you can find your own voice. <clears throat> All right. So without further ado. As always, we love that you're listening, and we've already given you all the information where to find us. So until next time, I'm author Carissa DeLay, and I'm asking you to always write, and this is... Author Jamie Vendera. Keep writing. All right. Until next time, thanks for listening.